Well, happy Memorial Day, everybody. Today's a special day where we uh, remember those who died fighting for our freedoms and how thankful, remember how thankful we are for, for those who, who risked their lives for us. So today, uh, I'm gonna show you how I built this tank in one weekend for under $100 in materials. So there's a few finishing touches left. Uh, the gun barrel is there, but it doesn't shoot anything yet. I gotta add a functional cannon. I got a few ideas I've gotta work out there. Um, I'm gonna make cardboard tracks and wrap that around here to simulate what the tracks will look like. And the fenders aren't glued on yet. I just set them in place because I um, thought the tracks would be easier to put on with the fenders removed. So the fenders are just setting there so I can get the painting done. and. Uh, uh, but this one, real easy project. Like I said, under hundred dollars. That's I had a few materials on hand, so I'll explain all that. But I did this in one weekend with help of my father-in-law and my kids. Uh, it was a fun project. So anybody can do this. Um, just follow along, and and I'll show you how I did it. This is a three D model of the tank on tanks.gg. I think that's some satellite website of World of Tanks. But anyway, this is the Type ninety five. Um, this was uh, produced by Japan during World War II from 1936 excuse me, all the way to 1944. They produced a total of around 2,400 of these tanks. Um, it was, I think, around seven tons, had a crew of three. There was just one commander in the turret. Really strange turret. I don't know why they have the machine gun pointed back at like the five o'clock position here. I couldn't find any reason given in any of the readings I've done of why it's pointed back at that angle. But anyway, uh, just one commander in the turret. And then down in the hull, you had the, the driver and then the hull machine gunner. Um, and uh, so in order to draw this thing, I downloaded a print from the-blueprints.com so here you can see the, the, the views of it, and then I just imported that into a CAD drawing and scaled it to the size I wanted, and then just started drawing an overlay of the overall shape of it. And I did some simplification of the shape just to make it easier to construct for this model. So um, took away some of the curves and just made it out of, in order to make it out of flat sheets, and um, uh, made sure it would everything would fit inside with the with the um, powered wheelchair and and however big everything's going to be but um, so then yeah after drawing it and and all the different parts of how it's going to come together then I just copied and pasted those out um, and uh, laid them out onto four foot by eight foot sheets so here are the four sheets of foam board I needed to make all of the sides of the of the tank. And then this is one sheet of hardboard for the turret roof. And then a few pieces I need out of OSB are here. I just had some leftover pieces. Um, you don't need a full sheet for that stuff, of course. For the turret, you just need the, uh, the bucket, which I'll show you shortly. And then a couple one by fours to make the frame of the gun mantlet and the gun mount here. And then a piece of two by six to make the, the, the main plate that the gun mounts in in the back. And then a piece of one inch PVC uh, for the gun barrel, which exactly matches the scale of the 37 millimeter cannon in the uh, Hago. Okay, that's my Sherman. But anyway, let's talk about materials for the Hago. So on the wall here, I got, um, on the back there's four sheets of four by eight by half inch thick foam board insulation. It's extruded polyethylene. Don't get expanded polyethylene. It's too weak. The extruded is much stronger and it's like a dollar a sheet more, 10 bucks a sheet. This is eighth inch thick hardboard. Uh, I think $8 a sheet. Um, I got a couple scraps of uh, uh, OSB. Need uh, some pieces six inch wide by, I don't know, three, two pieces about three feet long and two pieces about four and a half feet long. Um, this is one by four for the gun mount, and then I just need a small little piece of this one two by six for the mantlet of the gun. Uh, here I've got um, a piece of one inch PVC for the gun itself, the gun barrel, uh, four three inch casters, uh, a couple hinges to attach the uh, the drivetrain I'll call it to the uh, to the body of the tank, some paint. I got uh, 
olive drab, light green and brown. These are the colors approximately used by the Hago in uh, Saipan 1944. And then you'll need some, some foam board adhesive. A general construction adhesive will probably work, but they have this stuff specially made for foam board. It's about the same price. So I got four tubes of that. We'll see if I bought too much or not enough. I'll let you know at the end here. And um, here's my scale model out of cardboard, just to make sure everything fits together right. Got my drawings ready to go. And this is the turret. This is actually a, um, show you. 26 inch diameter, 15 inch deep planter made to fit into a whiskey barrel. So it happens to be the exact right diameter and height for a 60% scale Hago tank. So that will be our turret. We'll do some trimming and so forth to get it to fit. Um, and the last thing you're going to need is some mode of powering. So I got this uh, electric wheelchair. Fits in there perfectly. Nice and compact. It's got a one-hand drive joystick, so you can drive the tank with one hand, shoot with the other, and... Um, and I'll have to make two linkages to connect this to the inside of the tank. So I'll be showing you that as we as we go through the build. I also have this other wheelchair a friend at work gave me. It needs new batteries, but it, otherwise it works. And this is really a, a scooter, not a wheelchair. Sorry for all the other stuff in the way. But it's a three-wheel scooter with a handlebar on the front. And there's a, a trigger to go forward and a trigger on the other hand to go in reverse. So it requires two hands to drive. And that handlebar is up kind of high. It's a little bit in the way. I could make it work if I had to. Um, it's got a nicer frame that'd be easier to make attach some brackets to it on the, the frame goes all the way around the front and behind the back past the rear wheels. So it'd have been easier to attach some brackets to, but um, it needs new batteries anyway. So I'll use the one that works and that has the one hand control. So either, either one would work though for, for this project. Okay, here's our powered wheelchair with the base mounted to it that's gonna support the tank. So there's a caster under each corner. And um, there's a little uh, hinge here. And up here, there's a just a shoulder bolt going through a hole. So that allows this to float up and down. And on the front, I just, um, I put a little a bolt coming down from underneath the foot plate goes into a hole and that allows this to move up and down so that the uh, tank can move up and down with the ground as you go over uneven parts of the street and whatnot transitions onto driveways mainly all right so the turret is uh the roof has got three layers and that they're, they're gonna capture the turret so there's a bottom layer a middle layer and you can see the hole is bigger uh, and then there will be a top layer. So we'll go ahead and put the turret in there. So you can see it rests on there. And then this lip um, fits inside the, the middle layer. And then we'll put the top layer on. And uh, it captures the top of it. And then hopefully rotates in there easy enough um, without any special rollers or anything like that. We'll see how it goes. Okay, here's what we got so far. Take it for a spin. Now a few things aren't done yet, of course. The uh, fenders aren't installed. There's a fender that goes here. And uh, I just thought it'd be easier to paint with the fenders off. Paint everything and then I'm gonna um, wrap this with, I'm gonna make cardboard that looks like track and wrap all the way around here. So I'm gonna paint, then wrap the cardboard, then glue the fenders on. And then uh, it'll be ready to go. The gun is not yet functional. I'll probably make a separate video to show how to do that, but it does um, have good elevation and depression. And then uh, turret rotates, of course. So I will uh, get a different idea about what to, sh what to use for um, shooting the gun and what to use as a projectile. So more about that later, but um, here it is so far, it runs, I it, glue's still drying, so I'm just gonna let it um, dry overnight and then uh, paint it tomorrow. And um, 
that glue, it says on the bottle it takes seven days cure time, and it's no joke. Um, I, I, after uh, 24 hours, the glue is still really soft and squishy. It's got a skin on it, but it certainly is not strong enough. So you see I got all the parts taped into place to hold it together while the glue dries. So here we are, a uh, little bit of test driving before the paint job. Um, give me a few days and I'll post a list of materials that I had to buy and, and what the costs were on all that stuff. So if you want to build your own, you can, you can copy what I did here. Um, and then I'll probably make a part two video showing the, the, the completed tank with the tra tracks added and the gun. I'll show you how to build a gun that can actually fire something. Um, and I might add a few other details. I don't know. We'll see what I got time for, but, um, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Have fun, uh, building your own tank.